uh, I was talking about, man, in a state that has more cows than people, why do we buy beef from Nebraska? It's really a model that is, is older than anything in agriculture, right? Feeding community. And we've gotten so far removed from that that we've put ourselves in a really dangerous position. Right now, all these small towns are dying. And it's not just here, it's everywhere. Something drastic has to change. And this might be one small part of that change. I mean, I was like the weird kid on the ranch where, <laughs> you know, I was allergic to everything. So I was constantly a mess. I wasn't much, uh, was not, I'm not mechanical at all. And plus I just was constantly playing music. I think it was like April 15th. And that's when uh, states started to shut down because of COVID. And for whatever reason, my first thought was, well, music's gonna be the first to go. And my next thought was I should call my brothers and, and start a beef program uh, with them. Like my women, like them like, but they make a fool of you. So I'm all that stuff. Actually, when Jason called, my brother Matt had quite a few animals on feed that were really close to being ready. So the timing was actually just really great to, to kick it off. Oh, that stuff. It's, it's crazy to me that we have a product that people want right next to us, but getting it to them is a difficult thing. Once they get into the truck and leave the ranch, we have no idea what happens beyond that point. And beyond that, we're not meant to. The opportunity with starting our own beef program is to ensure that the animals are taken care of and that people know exactly what they're buying and where it came from. I mean, we have some of the best quality beef in the world, and we're not supplying to our local communities. One of the most impactful things I studied or I read was actually when I, after I got out of school, which I finally read Alan Savory's book on holistic management. He talks about everything from the, from the, the people, the community, relationships, to the plants, animals, soil, and how everything has to connect back to each other and every decision has to be made with uh, all of those things in mind. So we started playing with local products like, you know, peas and lentils and one of the biggest uh, kind of the byproduct of it that we didn't expect using the peas and lentils is, is that the flavor of the meat, it changes it and in a positive way. <laughs> I hope you're hungry. I'm very passionate about the food. Try it. It's so good. Look how sexy that is. Ah! I would say lower end, marbleization, and it's still super soft and tender. To see people that are just as passionate about the animals that they raise, that you're going to care about every single aspect that you're doing. Because they're local, because they're very sustainable in what they do, prices are going to stay the same, which for a restaurant business on our very small margins that we have, to have sustainability on the financial side as much as the ethical side is huge. I have to be able to provide the guest with a good tasting experience so that when they come here, they're going to remember it, but also know that the farm and the ranch that is around us is equally as important to me as knowing where the food you can get on a regular basis is.